He is a two-time returning PFL champion looking for a third straight championship and another million dollars. I'm here today with Lance Palmer. Lance, how is everything? Hopefully quarantine is not being too rough on you right now. I'm doing good, man. I'm, I'm taking it as it comes. I, obviously, this situation, we have to adapt and um, adjust our game plan a little bit for the, the last week and a half leading up to fight week. But um, we've been in here a little over seven days now and um, kind of business as usual. The, the first two days was the only days we had to quarantine inside the hotel room. And now we're able to go into the training rooms and into the gym and and uh, we kind of have a little bit more free reign and, you know, ordering groceries and things like that. But uh, it's been really good. Uh, just enjoying enjoying the time, even though it's a weird situation. I always take the time to step back when I get closer to fight and just kind of enjoy this process because I don't want to fight forever. And I always want to be able to remember the, you know, each fight camp is different. Each fight week is different. I like to be able to kind of calculate all the things that have happened during camp and, and the, during the fight weeks and even this quarantine thing and kind of bring the positives out of it and keep a positive mindset going into the fight week. I know the hardest part of this, I imagine, I know I text you with it when it happened, but obviously you welcomed your daughter into the world recently. Uh, how is, uh, how is dad Palmer treating you? It's awesome. <laughs> it's crazy to have a, uh, a little one at home and um you know everything's over facetime right now but i saw her right before i left uh last week and um they just grow so fast and they do you know she's eight weeks old as of yesterday and they just they're doing new things every day their um personalities um you know their their body their facial features like everything continues to grow every day so it's even in pictures i can see it and my wife notices it and she's with her every day. So for me, it's kind of crazy. Like when I get home on the 24th, it's going to be, you know, seeing a whole different child compared to what I left with. So I'm excited. I'm excited for that part of it when I get home, but it's, um, being a dad is, is awesome. It's just, uh, being able to enjoy being a dad will be cool once I get out of here. So now Lance, obviously we talked several times, you know, over the past year when you've been kind of, you know, forced to sit out, I know you've done training, you've worked on businesses and done a lot of different things, but as you gear up for fight week right now, like, how are you feeling, uh, in terms of your body, in terms of your preparation? I know it's been a long time coming, but, uh, you know, I know you took advantage of the time off as much as possible in terms of, you know, getting better, but also, you know, spending time with your family, working on businesses and things like that. But how is it feeling, you know, now at this point, you're days away from a fight. It's awesome, man. I, I'm in a good spot. I'm, I'm really, you know, everything that is going as planned as far as camp goes, my body fe feels great. My weight's on point, my weight's ahead of schedule for, um, you know, for next week already. So everything that, uh, needed to be done during camp was able to be accomplished. And, um, you know, it's, it's not, a uh, Honestly, it's it's business as usual when it comes down to it. I I feel really good, and over the last the last year or so of not being able to fight, I've been able to let my body heal from you know fighting. You know, I fought eleven fights within a two year and two month period. So I think letting my body heal up from all the training camps more than the actual fights was important, and still doing training, but doing training on my terms of you know going out and getting a run in or getting a heavy lift in or, you know, lifting with my buddies back home and just enjoying my time and enjoying time with my wife and my dogs and enjoying the house that we've built together. And just the, the things that, you know, the things that you don't get to enjoy every single day when my, my training camp isn't where I live. So I have to basically be gone from home all year long in 2018 and 2019. So Obviously, the negative part was not being able to have any fights and be able to provide uh, financially in that aspect of it. But um, the positives that came out of it were a lot greater than the negatives. Uh, you mentioned, of course, keeping things positive. And here I am going to ask you a negative question, but I have to do it, Lance, because I know, you know, the last year things did get a little ugly with the PFL. I know how you know things were going with, you know, the time off and the waiting to fight and 
you weren't the only one, obviously, was frustrated by everything, but you're back. You're back in the season. You're defending your title. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll kind of put a positive spin on this. Would you say things are in a better place now as you're getting ready to return to PFL? Like, have you been able to kind of, you know, kind of settle things with them in a way as you're coming back now? Well, not as far as last year goes, but I'm in a positive place for this season and for, you know, what I'm trying to accomplish this year. Um, last year is something that's definitely unresolved, but that's not anything that I'm focused on right now. Um, uh, focused on, you know, just getting through this first fight, getting the first fight out of the way and, and being back in action. But, um, as far as everything goes, you know, in a negative way of it, I guess would be just when you, when you're faced with those issues and there was a lot that I learned. Uh, going through that process and a lot of things that could have been done differently. Um, it's just, uh, you got to kind of take a step back and keep your distance sometimes because, um, you know, people aren't, people aren't always looking out for you. They got to look out for their own family and themselves first. So that's kind of the the mindset that I've had to take on too, is, um, you know, family, my family and myself come first in all these situations, whether it's business or personal. So that's probably the biggest positive that I've taken that I've taken out of that negative situation. But as far as like, like bad blood, there's no bad blood at all. I just don't feel it's resolved in a way, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm cool with everybody. I was always, I was always cool with Ray. Me and Ray have always had transparent conversations, even, you know, every time we talked throughout the last year, there's never been a bad conversation. And, um, but the thing is, is Ray actually fought. Ray was one of the toughest fighters in the world in K one. Ray fought MMA and world series of fighting while he was the, the president of world series of fighting. I mean, he's like, Ray is, uh, Ray's the best of the best as, as a person and as a fighter. And he understands the fighter mentality. He understands what fighters go through. He understands what, my side of things was and to have him as part of PFL to kind of be the buffer and the, the middleman in between the business people and the fighters. Um, I think it's really good. And, uh, Ray and I have, we've always had a great relationship even since the world series of fighting days. So, um, he was, he was there for a lot of, for me through a lot of that stuff. And, um, and I definitely, I always tip my hat off to Ray. He's a great guy. Uh, with that being said, Lance, as we look ahead to what's coming up for you in this tournament, you know, it's, uh, you know, there's one, you know, there's, there's one big positive, you know, coming into this season is that, you know, beyond earning money to, to make for your family and winning another championship, you obviously also want to advance your career and a big part of advancing your career is fighting new competition. And you have a whole lot of new competition this year in the featherweight division, a lot of new talent. Obviously we'll talk about Bubba Jenkins in a second, but uh, was that one aspect that got you kind of excited for this season, knowing that you are going to have some new competition now? I think each season has gotten progressively better. Uh, 2018, we had tough guys there, but a lot of them were guys that I had already fought. Like I had fought Siler before PFL. I fought Almeida before PFL. I fought uh, Harrison before PFL. So fighting those guys in PFL was like, you know, I've already fought these guys. So kind of knew what was go what was going into those fight camps a little bit, but, and then 2019, I ended up fighting the same guy in Gilpin three times because of circumstance and because he was a tough fighter and he put everybody else to sleep besides me. And so having a completely fresh slate of guys that I haven't fought is very refreshing. And I mean, besides me and Movlet, I don't think anyone else was in the 2019 season. So um, basically, eight, you know, eight new guys or seven new, seven new competitors for me, uh, basically, potentially. And um, yeah, it's definitely refreshing and it's, it's nice. Uh, when I saw the matchups for this first card, when it was getting announced and I saw you were fighting Bubba Jenkins, I told somebody from PFL, I said, wow, they're not wasting any time getting right into the rivalry fights uh, because I know this one goes back to college days. Now, uh, to be fully disclosed here, I am currently sitting in Columbus, Ohio. 
15 minutes away from the Ohio State University. So I'm a little bit biased in terms of my uh, my Buckeye pride here in terms of this rivalry. But uh, were you happy to get Bubba right out of the gate? And, and knowing that, you know, there is, a, I mean, obviously we can't deny there's a bit of a rivalry here. Honestly, for me, like I've known Bubba since 2005. I don't really, I don't consider this a rivalry at all. I just think of it as a person that I know outside of fighting that I'm fighting now. Um, as far as there being a rivalry, I think he's the one that's tried to create a rivalry in his own head. I don't really see, <laughs> I don't see the rivalry there. I just see, you know, a, a good competitor, um, somebody I know who did really well in wrestling, um, you know, 12, 13 years ago. And, uh, you know, we're both in completely different points of our lives. We're in our thirties. Uh, the last time we both competed in wrestling was over a decade ago. And, um, we're both fighters now. And so I think, you know, people are trying to weigh our fight based off of what our wrestling careers were. Uh, I think they're going to be, you know, very surprised if they go by that. So, I think as far as MMA career goes, I've fought tougher competition. I've done better against tough competition than he has. And uh, I, th I think I just have more skills when it comes to, to winning this fight. It's funny you say that. It's almost like you're reading my mind because for all the ways that, you know, Bubba will talk about the college record and, and the wrestling matches, you know, in a way, and obviously I don't want to do, you know, I don't want to degrade what Bubba has done during his MMA career. Uh, but mm -hmm. when you look at, you know, kind of how you've splintered apart, let's say, in terms of success, Bubba's had success, obviously, but he hasn't had those kind of high profile big wins as you. And he obviously has, you know, more, you know, kind of losses. I, again, not digging the guys who have beaten him, but just, you know, again, not the same level of competition. You feel like that's the biggest difference in this fight is that, you know, yeah, you know, maybe he may, maybe he beat you in wrestling a couple of times, you know, 15 years ago. But in terms of MMA, uh, you have actually, you know, kind of advanced your career pretty far. And, and obviously there's a reason why you're a pretty heavy favorite going into this fight. Yeah. And on top of that, I mean, if we go all the way back to wrestling each other, I mean, I did beat him in one of the matches that we competed in that year. And all the matches we competed in were in the same season, the 2008 season. And so it's like, I mean, I guess you can go back and say, yeah, in 2008, I beat this guy or that guy. But if we're going to go back to 2008, I beat Jordan Burroughs. So does that make me an Olympic champ? No. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of ways you could kind of look at it and try and justify things. But I think he's doing that to, you know, get himself motivated or give himself confidence going into it, which is, which is fine. Everybody handles, you know, uh, things going into a fight differently. And, uh, you know, I, I like Bubba. I don't mind the guy at all. I really have no problem with him with his trash talk going into the fight or whatever it is. So, um, he says he's been counting down the days. So that's cool. I'm enjoying my days and making the days count while he's counting his. So, <laughs> uh, that's about it. I mean, there's, there's nothing, you know, win or lose when I go into any fight, I've never gone into a fight obviously thinking to lose, but you go into a fight and you're always prepared for not getting the nod at the end of the fight, because that's when you're a competitor, that's why you do it. You, you're not afraid to go in there and test yourself against guys who are tough against, you know, high competition. You're, you're going in there and obviously you're confident enough to get the win, but you know that anything can happen and the fear you know, overcoming the fear of the what ifs when you go in the cage. And, you know, that's something that, that I've always enjoyed about wrestling and fighting is there's no guarantee in anything, no matter how, how much you think you can win or how much work you put in. It's like when you go into a fight, it's a 50, 50 shot because anybody can get caught. Anything can happen. And one thing Joseph Benavidez always says that, you know, he says there's no order in MMA, you know, like there's no, you don't deserve anything. Like if you, if you win, it's because you've earned the win. It's not really because you may not deserve it more than the other guy, but you've earned it because you got your hand raised that night. And it was kind of, you know, based off of him always, you know, not getting the, the wins in the title fights and, and having a championship belt around his waist. And I, I always take that, and I think of it really deep because 
you know, you think of a guy like who's more deserving to have a, a UFC championship under their belt than Benavidez and for him to kind of bring that reality to it. Like there's, there's tons of guys that have won belts that aren't necessarily like a deserving person or like a good human being that should be like a UFC champion or a champion in an organization. But, you know, the th- the cards have all fallen in a row for him and things have happened for them. And, and it's always been so true to me, but it's, it's like, you can do everything right. You can try to be a good person. You can help others. You can have a positive attitude. You can put all the training and everything and do everything a hundred percent perfectly. And, and it could just not be your night, but, I know that I've done every single thing possible up to this point that if I bring my best on April 23rd, Bubba Jenkins will not get his hand raised. Yeah. To that point, uh, you know, when you look at the field and, and obviously there's a chance you'll fight a lot of these guys throughout the season. But uh, when you look at the field right now, I think a lot of people, obviously you're number one, but a lot of people will say, you know, Bubba is, you know, one of the other top guys in this division to get him right out of the gate. You kind of set the tone, right? Like you go out there and you beat Bubba Jenkins, you kind of set the tone for the season. Oh, a hundred percent. It's cool. Just, I mean, one, because he's the loudest out of everybody. So it kind of puts him, puts him in a back seat for the rest of the season. And then, um, but as far as like competitors go, I think Movlet is probably, uh, one of the tougher guys in the division overall else. And I think he's, uh, skill wise and, uh, you know, fight wise, I think he's a, a really interesting opponent, but as far as, uh, you know, as far as it goes for right now, I'm just completely focused on Bubba and, um, you know, once April 23rd is over, then, we get to look for the other guys. Yeah. We'll talk again this season, but I'm going to ask this question kind of closing out you know, with this, you know, you've been a two time champion. You, you, you've taken home the $2 million in prizes, but uh, you know, being a three time champion, I mean, that's something special. And when you think about what you have to go through to do it, you know, you kind of restart at the, at the start of every year, you're not just handed anything. You have to go through another yeah. tournament. Uh, again, you have that wrestling background. So you understand that mentality, but what would it mean for you to, to three Pete uh, as PFL champion? It would be awesome. And I always try to explain it in a, uh, Obviously, since it's a season format, I'm not starting with a belt. The belts that I've won in the past in 2018 and 2019, those are always going to be my belt. And I earned those by winning that season. So I don't look at this season as defending anything. I look at it as I'm chasing the belt just like everyone else is. And a lot of people, a lot of these guys get it wrong. They're chasing me, but I'm not chasing any of them. I'm chasing a title, whereas they think, beating me wins them the title, but it may not, you know what I mean? There's a, there's a lot of things that my mentality is just a little different. I'm chasing the third title and they're chasing me to a certain extent. I feel like a lot of people's focus is on me instead of focusing on themselves and trying to be the best in the season. So, um, you know, that's kind of how I think about it. And I think that's where a lot of these guys are getting it wrong. Yeah, no, that's a great mentality. And absolutely, it kind of keeps you in that challenger mindset where you're always grabbing for grabbing for the gold, so to speak. And uh, like mm-hmm. I said, you see that hunger, man, that that's a real deal. And you all, you never seem to lose sight of that in, in any of these past seasons. And uh, uh, I know you're not going in as the champion, but you are the guy to beat Lance. I got to be honest, two times you got, you know, you, you're, <laughs> you, you know what it's like. You've been there and you've done that. No, I understand that mindset completely. And, uh, and I love that you know, that guys are, you know, it's, it's kind of like a respect thing. I feel, you know, they, they have to respect me because I have won it twice. And, and, um, you know, some of them may try and take a page out of my book and, you know, maybe, you know, try and follow the the format and things like that, that I've done over the last couple of years. And, and, and it's awesome because I feel like if they're doing that, that then, uh, you know, if they're, trying to come after me, then they respect me enough to know that I'm the guy in the division. So I just have to go out there and prove it. Yeah. Well, Lance, I'm looking forward to the season. It's so funny. You mentioned your wrestling matches with Bub and you said that. And I was like, Oh my God, like how long have I been covering your career now? Cause I remember Dude, the wrestling, ma- I remember the wrestling matches at Ohio state. I'm like, Oh man, yeah. <laughs> this goes yeah, back he, many I years. Think he, he beat me in a dual meet at OSU. And I don't know if that was 20, I don't know if that was 2007 or 2008, but it was during that season. 
And I was like, damn, how long ago? What? And then when I thought about it, I was like, dude, that was 13 years ago. Like this guy's still stuck in the past. <laughs> but I mean, like I said, everybody's got to pump themselves up a certain way for the fight. So it's, uh, you know, to each their own. Yeah, it's so bizarre when you say that. I was like, geez, man, that's forever. It just doesn't seem like it's that long ago. Like, I swear to you, I was like, I, I think about your wrestling career. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's a couple of years ago. I was like, oh, actually, maybe it wasn't a couple of years ago. I guess it wasn't. You know, I guess it was longer. So, it's yeah. crazy, man. Once college was over, time just started flying by. Like, I feel like every year, we're already in April of 2021, and 2021 feels like it just started. So it's it's crazy how fast life goes by. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Lance, uh, thank you as always for the time. Obviously, uh, you know, safe, uh, safe training these last couple of days. Best of luck in the fight. I know we'll catch up again during the season, but thank you as always for taking the time. And I cannot wait for, uh, for PFL to kick off here next week. Awesome, man. Thanks again. I appreciate it.